The ongoing transformation of the world order inevitably affects the regional subsystems of international relations. Thus, in Northeast Asia, the crisis of several pairs of system-forming ties is immediately obvious, Russia-Japan, China-Japan and Japan-South Korea. Difficulties are also observed in the interaction between China and Russia on the one hand and the Republic of Korea on the other. At the same time, the influence of the DPRK on the security climate has increased significantly in recent times. Mongolia is the only country in the region that has practically no significant disputes or disagreements with any states. Due to the specifics of its geographical location, its main partners are Russia and China. Mongolia also highly appreciates the potential for the formation of a multipolar world, free from conflict. Probably, the current geopolitical conditions may both give a new impetus to the development of the country and, on the contrary, initiate chaos in domestic and foreign policy. Well, 2022 is a year of turmoil in the world natural gas market. This year, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine and the bombing of Nord Stream 2 have caused major changes in the world's energy landscape, and they have fallen into a complex game of sanctions and anti-sanctions. However, when Europe's energy supply is in chaos, Asia, which is thousands of miles away, is thriving. In fact, a natural gas pipeline project with amazing reserves is about to start in 2024. It starts from the Arctic Ocean region of Russia, passes through Mongolia, and finally reaches North China. In the summer of 2022, the leaders of Mongolia will let the outside world know that negotiations with China and Russia have been completed. The construction of this natural gas project called Power of Siberia 2 will start in 2024 and is expected to be fully completed by 2030. So, what impact will this natural gas artery connecting China, Russia, and Mongolia have on energy in China and the world? In addition, why does Mongolia want to let this pipeline pass through itself so badly? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about today, and let's get started. As we all know, Russia has always been the main supplier of European energy. At least 30% of European oil needs to be imported from Russia. Without the supply of Russian natural gas, the winter for many Europeans will be extremely difficult. In the past, the cooperation between Russia and Europe in the field of oil and gas went very smoothly. In 2021 alone, Russia earned 244.2 billion US dollars in the world oil and gas market, accounting for more than one-third of government revenue, most of which came from Europe countries. Before the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Russia's natural gas exports to Europe accounted for 80% of the total exports. However, the flames of war between Russia and Ukraine have cast a heavy shadow over Russia's natural gas exports to Europe. According to statistics, the export volume of Gazprom dropped by 18.6% last year, and the export volume to countries outside the former Soviet Union dropped by an astonishing 42%. Although the world's oil and gas prices rose sharply last year due to war factors, Russian energy companies, which have reduced exports, still have huge profits. But the problem is that although Russia can survive the difficulties by rising prices in the short term, in the medium and long term, due to the influence of political mutual trust, the European market has become increasingly unreliable for Russia. According to an ambitious energy plan announced at the beginning of last year, the EU declared that in the next few years it will do everything possible to reduce energy dependence on Russia, increase energy imports from Azerbaijan, Norway, North America and other places, and vigorously develop renewable energy including hydrogen and biogas, so as to completely end dependence on Russian oil and gas by 2030. Based on the EU's financial resources and scientific research capabilities, this plan is likely to be realized, and Russia will be in a very dangerous situation at that time. In the world, the only country that can offset the impact of the European market to the greatest extent is China, which has emerged as the world's second largest economy. Since the beginning of this century, China's demand for natural gas has increased unprecedentedly. Out of environmental protection needs to improve the energy structure, China is quite fond of cleaner natural gas, which has brought about a sharp increase in the dependence on foreign natural gas. In 2018, China's natural gas consumption was about 283 billion cubic meters, which was nearly 120 billion cubic meters more than domestic production that year. 
and the growth rate of consumption is far greater than the growth rate of production. It is estimated that the total import volume will reach 170 billion cubic meters this year, and it is highly dependent on foreign imports like oil. It is worth noting that 170 billion cubic meters is only 20 billion cubic meters less than Russia's natural gas exports to Europe in 2019. Therefore, as early as 2020, Putin personally approved a costly project the Power of Siberia 2 natural gas pipeline and formally organized experts to conduct the preparatory stage of line development. What is puzzling is that China and Russia already had a Power of Siberia 1 natural gas pipeline in 2014. Why did China and Russia deliberately add the power of Siberia too and make this line take a detour to pass through Mongolia? What is the deep meaning behind this? In 2014, China and Russia signed a 30-year power of Siberia 1 natural gas agreement. However, this line has a shortcoming, that is, its starting point is located in central Siberia, far away from the most abundant Yamal oil and gas field, so the amount of natural gas it can transport is relatively limited. In addition, the Yamal region is the most important source of Russian natural gas to Europe. If Russia can build a new pipeline from the Yamal oil field, it will not only meet China's demand, but also increase competition between China and Europe, stimulate European customers, and then help Russia raise prices. In addition, if Russia chooses to enter Xinjiang, China from Kazakhstan, it will compete with the natural gas pipelines from Central Asian countries to China, which is not conducive to Russia's price increase. In addition, the Mongolian route is closer to the core economic zone in eastern China, and natural gas transportation can save the journey from Xinjiang to the eastern coast. Moreover, for a long time, Mongolia has been the main promoter of the Sino-Russian natural gas pipeline passing through its own jurisdiction. After all, the benefits of a natural gas pipeline for Mongolia cannot be underestimated. Similar to Russia, China has also had various conflicts with Europe and the United States in recent years on a series of issues involving core interests. As a supplier, Russia is blocked by Europe and the United States in the export market, while China is repeatedly restricted by Europe and the United States on the demand side and the energy security situation is not impressive. At present, in addition to importing natural gas from Russia and Central Asian countries on land, China's main channel is to import liquefied natural gas from Australia, the United States and other countries through LNG ships. Australia exports nearly 31 million tons of liquefied natural gas to China every year, and the United States exports nearly 9 million tons. As we all know, the relationship between China and these two countries was very tense in the past two years. Once sanctions are imposed suddenly for political reasons, China's natural gas supply will face a great test. Therefore, for China, importing oil and gas from countries with high political mutual trust as much as possible is a necessary way to resolve sanctions. It is estimated that the annual transportation capacity of the power of Siberia 2 design can reach 50 billion cubic meters which is only 5 billion cubic meters less than that of the Nord Stream 2. In addition to the already used power of Siberia 1, nearly 100 billion natural gas will be continuously transported from the north to China in the next year, and it will be matched with Central Asian natural gas to fully guarantee China's energy security. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.